to comment a little bit about what one experiences in Tunisia as the Minister of Foreign Affairs. But uh, we, we need for this to understand how it happened that some people like me and others were at the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And uh, I don't think that, I think really that the, uh, the impact of the self assimilation of Muhammad Bouhari was very, very important in uh, December 2010. And uh, the question is, what did I learn from these experiences about, which is a really very important question you mentioned, the behavior of the population and the people who were working with this institution, and uh, what was, and uh, what was the philosophy? Like this, of this kind of uh, I have to say that it is really difficult even to get to speak about. But I am trying to know. And um, it did happen uh, with the fall of the regime. And uh, to speak really about what the uh, we did during this year to take me out, but, and uh, why, why? It's because um, during this period we had really the feeling that we were trying to accomplish all that had left under us during the years that the issue we went for at least 15 years. How? For this I will uh, outline the general context. Secondly, I will uh, talk about the difficulties we face and uh, I will talk about uh, some of the decisions that we took during this debate. We have to understand that uh, since the beginning of the 20th century in Tunisia, we witnessed the diversity of the feminist activity and this is not very well known. Tunisia has a history of feminism at least for one century. It's as old as what happened in Asia. And, uh, Feminist of diversity, uh, nationalist, social, cultural, religious, communist, and many independent women. But this activity confronted two historical barriers. The first one was the colonial rule, which placed a barrier on the natural evolution of women's emancipation and interrupted it what was known as the reformist movement since it did not fit into the colonial And we have uh, several, several documents that prove this. The second thing is appeared since 1987 with the authoritarian regime of Belali, which appropriates women's discourse, the feminist one, as a window dressing while marginalizing the voice of historic feminist leaders, excluding the opposition and using it as a pretext, the protection of sexuality. And even women were in the of fact. And we had Currently, there is a great demographic imbalance with a high proportion of unmarried adults and a high numbers of unemployed in all areas, especially among the youth and more even particularly among women where, uh, who are educated and who are twice as likely men to be unemployed. So the situation was really as worse for men but it was as difficult for them. Emphasis is uh, frequently placed on the need to recover their dignity. This is, it will take me out to the skirt, and uh, I can really don't have that. But what does it mean, dignity? This is uh, it's important to discuss, but I don't think that it is relevant today. The development policies up to 2010 have contributed to regional dedicated uh, demographic imbalance uh, with some villages in rural areas containing only women, children, and the aged. And this is concerned the heart of the country at the level. In 2010-11, Tunisian women did not want to miss their rendezvous with history, and among the characteristics of the Tunisian revolution, for which there is a consensus, is the fact that it had its sources in the poorest region of Tunisia that was spontaneous 
carried out by the youth, peaceful and without political leaders. Women were very good at starting with the first demonstration. Some were younger, other others. Some were an employee, other employees. And they were numerous in the streets of communities in their interior life, like Kathleen, Sirikusi, Tara. It's important to, to, to mention the names of these uh, part of the country, as well as the capital streets. And in some cases, this is very important, and I don't think that you can see this image elsewhere, is that uh, in some cases, young women were carried on the child, shoulders of young men. And this was a picture that we saw everywhere on the newspaper and on the cover of magazines which it shows also the, the culture of the country in the state of women. A number of local newspapers published these photographs in the, and the, in the red case they were painted, waiting the rebellion against the Benali regime and the corruption of the, his, his, uh, his clan, with the demonstrator often waving the Tunisian flag over the shoulders. Now one that remains aims of the transitional government set up in the 2011 was to ensure that the state itself continues uh, to function. Coming from civil society, I was given the choice of the position of Ministry of Culture or Ministry of Women's Affairs, and the English salary was 2042 or half month, a period that was later extended to July, then to October, when the uh, elections were postponed, and finally until December. At each change, we had to adapt our programs to a new timing with programs in the area within the ministry jurisdiction, women and family, children, and the age. During the first two months of the revolution, uh, the government was supported by the wave of social demands stemming from the stiffening of popular expression and activity during the Benali regime. Within our ministry, we made an effort to document all this discussion and meeting, and this documentation provided an important evidence about the behavior of and about the situation of citizens, their perception of the revolution, and the nature of the political culture of the Benali regime. The months of January, February, at the beginning, and December at the end were the most difficult, when various social groups expected the government to satisfy the demands immediately. In the first two and a half months I had meeting, this will be a period I'm something completely crazy, is I had meetings with more than 1,000 people, listening to their demands from the most urgent to the most extreme. And it's because they didn't have confidence in any other person. They had to meet the minister. And this was the case for all of us. It wasn't only for me. Secondly, the main aim of the Ministry for Women and Affairs was to prepare a strategy to, to reflect the needs of the ministry constituencies uh, and to gain the women's and the general population confidence in the ministry. For this ministry has been used as a tool by Benahli's wife for her own benefit and not to serve the cause of women. In fact, when I first took over the ministry, the previous minister told me that all decisions concerning the ministry had been passed down from the palace. And I will learn later that programs uh, had been determined by bilateral co cooperation with approximately 75% of the programs which are returning to the foreign country and to the international organization. We had to provide a solid foundation for our, for our work. For this, we had to elaborate a new authority for reflection and women's issues to raise these to a higher status to take into account all kinds of discrimination against women and to help women become conscious of their capacity to transform their reality. And really, when I was uh, visiting uh, some villages and uh, small towns, it was very sad because we could see that the situation of women didn't change at all since 1950. So it was really something that it was very heavy. Uh, we, we didn't have money, we didn't have budget, we didn't have uh, uh, people working with us, and to this end we brought in women artists and intellectuals to collaborate with us from the civil society. Among the most difficult of the problem I confronted were the fact that that staff numbers were very limited, and uh, it's important to, to give you the number, leading to a situation where much of the country was not covered at all uh, in the domain of women and the family. And uh, for example, what was the 
we were, they were only 22 from the director's visit. <laughs> they were 22, 17 in Tunis and uh, uh, outside the, the city, and uh, it was all. And uh, mostly the activity was to organize, uh, to celebrate the 7th of November for Benahmi uh, and to celebrate the 13th of August, which was the day where women had the uh, the uh, personal status, the communication of the personal status code in 1956 and 1956. These required a certain we had to look for how we can have more people, and this required a training program for the new personnel to be done up to date with the latest uh, knowledge and now. Another aspect that I was, I was discovering in the course of my work as a lady was also rather strange that many of these companies came from field and related to the concerns of the ministry, and that there were often close family ties, and we had several people who were wife and husband working in the same place, or the two sisters. Sisters were uh, directors, and the daughter in law of the fifth minister, or the sister of the other executive house. You could almost say that the less qualification the person had, the higher position <laughs> she had, especially if she was a member of the ruling party or worked for one or of the three NGOs which had a close ties to the government. This party explained why, when you try to recruit the staff to the ads in the group in the past, because practically it's not just that. Because the image of the image of the institution among the population, the one of the people. And it's true, when uh, they asked me what would be my choice, I said, oh, okay, I'll take a woman like that. They said, are you sure? I said, yes, yes. I said, like, okay. What do you want? What do you like? Put this in the right team. First one is the best <laughs> And they were surprised when I said, no, I don't take a woman like that. The decision taken to bring our time as a ministry gives you some examples to give shows what how we did. Women today are still not considered political actors. Even with their uh, uh, participation in the election. I will tell you why. For example, whereas the political figures and the political population more broadly called for the dissolution of all the organized political parties, the FCD, there was nothing on the sort regarding the elimination of the family energy, which was the of the FCD. No, he was a little bit uh, interesting to look at and it really deserves to be more than on this question. I took the decision that the minister's role was primarily to serve its constituents and that political parties would have no role in it. Also that the minister could not support any particular woman organization which uh, had the consequences of this, uh, the, 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 the NGO that were supporting the sector, which had a consequence of coercion and independent women to call for the dissolution of the National Union of Tunisian Women, and uh, which had been closely tied to the Benahdi regime and had worked to promote essentially the like Benahdi regime, was rather than from the Tunisian The second decision was we set up a commission to oversee how programs were financed, trying to cover a situation where under the old regime a presidential decree stipulated that, for example, for example, UNFCC's salary was not to be the first, longer, and that she was to have the status and all other decisions of the Secretary of State. So this was a little bit, you know, the rip, uh, not ethical, because she is an independent and supposed to be an independent. <coughs> At the same time, she was paid as the Secretary of State. And of these uh, old books, all of this had to be paid from the limited budget of our ministry. The deflecting, the deflection of some of the ministry's structure and activities to benefit the women, such as moving the emergency section for women uh, victim of victims of violence, financed by the Ministry for, for Women's Affairs, to the Batsma Association of Lebanon. So the third one, the third decision, when the question about women were in the chair, out since uh, 1981 by decree one way, which forbid the head scarf and looking at institutions, we declare that we consider this to be the choice and the right of the institutions. Later, the Minister of Interior decided that it was no longer forbidden to have identity photos of the head. Fourth one. 
And it was really important because seven women were arrested and in jail for refusing the, the refugees. We call it for piety in the elections, and this was made part of the program of the Commission for Political Reforms. One case was for performed. In, part, uh, in the pluralist context, the concept of piety in political parties, where each party is required to have an order list of candidates, which, is, which uh, with each candidate followed by the candidate of the opposite sex, again, the unanimous consent, including figuration from high across the political spectrum, including the NASA, with the, the High Commission for Political and the concept of piety was quickly accepted by the population, generating no negative discussion, which is a little bit important to show that people were uh, ready for this. With five, we set up a commission to, uh, several commissions to revise the various legal goals, penal, judicial, public, etc. Et 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 so that women's rights would be protected. These are the views that the laws that were adopted during the Benali Labor Relations Women's Labor, uh, for example, were presented and publicized as though designed to aid women, but they were of no real aid to women. They were simply in the death. A university for women's rights and democracy, in order to train the city personnel for on the national and national level that was created. And I think uh, the start of the campaign, this was very uh, successful for me. And uh, we started the campaign of television and veggie sports and posters in the big space to encourage watching women, uh, women's vote. And uh, it was on that television, you can find it on uh, the web. And uh, I must go to court. The seven one and the last one, I'm not a uh, I think it's uh, among the most important one. We uncovered the passage of a law in August 11, listing Tunisia reserve concerning the CEDO, Convention of Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, despite the Methodist 